Welcome to another episode of Embossed. I'm really excited to have an interview today with Salian de la Casa. If you would like to support this podcast, please head over to my webpage, www.embossed.io, and subscribe. Also, you can support this podcast by following me on TikTok, YouTube, and any other platform that I'm on. Thank you so much for being here. I hope you enjoyed this interview. Salian de la Casa is one of the 4% of women globally who has a patent pending method and algorithm for measuring soft skills as a sole inventor. Salian holds degrees and certification in law, organizational behavior, and urban planning. She speaks five languages and is a published author. Her education spans the globe from Harvard University to Franklin College to University of Toronto. Sally Ann spends her days obsessing about Gleek, her technology company, which measures and develops soft skills, gaps for any job in 10 minutes a day. Gleek's client and partners include Prada, Accenture, Corn Fairy, Monster, etc. Gleek has been featured in the Dubai Cares, The Future is Human Pavilion at Expo 2020. Salian de la Casa is also the founder of the Growing Leaders Foundation. In partnership with the UNDP, thousands of at-risk youths and adults annually benefit from her foundation's work delivering soft skills in the Caribbean, Latin America, and MENA region. She's currently based in the APAC region. Her foundation has, has worked with many of the largest companies in the region of Mubadala, DP World, DU, Nest, Nestle, DL Piper, DLA Piper, PwC, etc. In 2016, she serves as the she served as the only female in C-suite position at Kareem to help stabilize the workforce and shape its organizational culture. Kareem was purchased by Uber for 3.1 billion in January 2020. So Leanne is having the time of her life right now, ensuring every human, regardless of their background and degree, will not only have equitable an equitable seat um, at the job table, but can also invite someone to sit. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Unbossed. I am super excited today to have a special guest in our conversation. Her name is Salian de la Casa, because I know it's an Italian last name, so I'm going to say it with my Italian accent. Uh, she is an amazing woman who I've gotten to know virtually and uh, uh, through video and content in the last few weeks. Let me tell you a little bit about her. I'm not going to let her sit through her whole bio, but she finished high school at 15. She achieved five degrees by the age of 21. She speaks more, at least five languages that I know of um, and is currently building and leading Gleek from Dubai. Welcome, Salian. Welcome and thank you so much, Marina, for having me. And yes, the accent was perfecto. <laughs> perfecto, <Yeah>. fantastico. <laughs> <laughs> so if you didn't know this, I was born in Bologna. Wow, no, I didn't know that. Uh, but I'm half Italian and half Dominican and you're from Trinidad and Tobago and a mix of other things. Please tell me about that. Exactly, exactly. So um, yes, uh, even though I'm from Trinidad and Tobago, um, I grew up. Uh, all over the world. So yeah. um, uh, in Europe, um, in Canada, um, in the Arab world, uh, my background is I'm, I, I am Muslim, Hindu and Catholic. Um, so I go to church, I go to <laughs> temple and I go. So um, my, my, my vision board is very, very mixed, Marina. That is so awesome. And as a mix and as another mixed person, as another woman of color in tech, uh, I just want to say thank you for being who you are and which is way more important. I feel that uh, the any of achievement and how you're leading. I feel like as I've been looking at your videos in the last few weeks, how you lead to me has stuck a lot uh, and not to diminish your achievements. They're amazing. But how you have led your life or how you talk about yourself has helped me also resonate a little bit more with myself as a woman of color, as a founder, as a woman in tech. So I appreciate you so much for those special uh, deliveries. 
Well, thank you um, wholeheartedly. Um, I try as much as I can to lead from a place of vulnerability being courage. Um, and um, you have no idea how much I hope it whispers to others, because if I can do it, anybody can do it. <laughs> Well, I'm telling you, um, I definitely, uh, it definitely does. Um, and I have um, a few questions for you today. Let's let's get into it a little bit. With Gleek, um, you are trying or you are delivering 21st century skills that cannot be automated by AI through technology. What a juxtaposition, right? Of <laughs> things. Yes. Um, you have at least hundreds of thousands of customers around the world, worldwide, which is up amazing. Tell us a little bit, like what, let's start from maybe from the most current situation. What have you noticed about Gleek now that maybe was not in the beginning of Gleek? Sure. So um, any founder will tell you the company that they thought they were building mm. is not the company that they end up with. Um, and that's if you're truly listening to where the market is going and your customer insights. So the company Gleek is today, which is a platform that helps organizations um, innovate, problem solve and learn with 500,000 plus of the world's leading experts was not the company that I built. You know, this company that, you know, next month I'm releasing a mentor GPT of contrarian thinkers um, and outlier thinkers that was going to go up against chat GPT, um, or I should say alongside, right? Who yeah. wants to take yeah. on, right? So yeah. alongside chat alongside. GPT, it's going to be, it's going to be an and, not an or. <laughs> um, uh, it, I would have never, I would have laughed at you if you told me. So there is a pre and post chat GPT for all of us. Huh? Uh, January of this year was when it was for me. Um, and the company today is very focused around what we spent the last, you know, several years building and how mm. it comes to market now because of chat GPT. Mm. Yes. And Gleek specifically, and I've been, I have had the pleasure of using it in the last few weeks um, has been a platform that has opened my eyes to a lot of things. But I, but I wanted to ask you a few questions. Um, for one, as I was interviewing your uh, interim CTO, Haley, who is an amazing person, she told me that it's as you experience Gleek, you're basically exp experiencing you. And it's so relevant because we were just talking about the founder's journey be behind the startup itself. So I guess my question is like, how did you deliver yourself in an app? And was that uh, a thing that you did consciously? <laughs> I didn't do it consciously, but it's funny that when people interact with the product, they often go, we see you, all people who know me. They're like, you're all over there. We can tell that's you. Yeah. Um, uh, and I think, you know, I'm building this from a place of passion and I happen to have a strength in the area that I'm very passionate about. And it, if I look back at the work of Gleek and what is the, you know, the underlying work of Gleek, it's human potential and possibility and how do I allow you to showcase that it goes back to when I was 13 years old Marina you know volunteering and training and mentoring all through my 20s doing the same thing and all of a sudden you know my eyes opened up to you know I can build tech you know um, to be able to do this so I think understanding who I am and why I'm here and um, you know I think when you when you know that and which is what I wish for everybody, Marina. Um, the it, you know it's it's like perfume. You know how when sometimes you can smell the scent of good perfume after the person it lingers after the person leaves the room. Yeah. Um, it, you know, and that happens sometimes. Like we smell something and it takes us right back to our childhood. Yeah. I almost think that that's what has happened now with the tech. There's this like <laughs> fragrance of me <laughs> within the product. <laughs> So first of all, I have to say, uh, brilliant product. Um, when I, I have to be honest, when the first I was approaching a, and then and it was a product to learn some type of tech ed tech product, um, I my mind uh, uh, 
my mind by default fell into uh, Udemy, Coursera, and I was ready to cut my veins, to be honest, because I've been in so many of those. <laughs> oh my God, I cannot, if they if they see another white dude explaining to me a tech concept in front of a presentation, it's like bleak and nothing happens. And I buy, like, how many times have I bought these courses and never finished them just to like fast through, fast forward through them and maybe yeah. get something or maybe not, you know? But then uh, my experience has been, I opened the app and the first thing that hit me was the music. Mm hmm and I was like, wait, what? <laughs> what? And for the audience listening, um, try it. Because it is part of the experience. Then there's the colors and then design. And then you deliver to us an incredible amount and level of expertise. Accessible to professionals that are looking for to learn something. Really, really, really learn something. Yeah, I love that, and I love that you um, you you uh, you experience that. So we forget. So one of my degrees um, is in urban planning, and when I took that urban planning degree, and you know the others are very like you know technical degrees, and everyone's like, "Why are you taking an urban planning degree?" And I said, you know, in my mind, subconsciously, I didn't know it at the time, but it comes out in Gleek. I use that degree in Gleek. Mm -hmm. How we feel in spaces impacts how we show up, how we engage, mm. how we are open to learning. So think about when you go to one of those like fancy hotels. I remember I used to live in uh, Miami uh, years back and you walked into the Delano and everybody who walked into Delano <laughs> felt like Madonna. Yeah. <laughs> you know? There was just something about the space, <laughs> right? Like a power made you feel. And I, I, in building the product, I thought to myself, how do I create space that when, even though it's tech, like we forget tech is space, just mm -hmm. like a physical room or like a hotel. Mm -hmm. How do, you know, the audience, the minute you come into that space, all of a sudden I make you feel completely different. Mm -hmm. And I've completely now opened you up and prime you to go, okay, let's have a cool experience together. Fantastic. So that's what that was. <laughs> and tell me, a let's get a little bit technical. How did you, so you had an idea that you wanted an, an experience, a specific experience. How do you go from like a feeling of how I want my experience to go to actually delivering that experience? Sure. Um, so I don't come with tech background, Marina. Um, yeah. But, you know, I, I built my first prototype you know, four years back, um, you know, hired like anyone else starting off, like you have in your mind what you want to, it wasn't this version that you have right now. I was like, yeah. I want to deliver, you know, micro skills of, you know, 21st century skills where yeah. people can super simple, hired an external company um, and built a prototype. And I remember taking the prototype of an app and I took it and I showed it to um, PwC, which is yeah. like this big consulting firm. And the lady who looked at it, she looked at me and she goes, okay, great. When can we start? I would love to roll this out. And I, of course, me being me, the ultimate saleswoman, I was like, we can do it this month. And she, and she goes, and what does it cost? And I had no, cl a no clue of pricing then. I was like, it's going to cost $25,000. And she, she's like, okay, we're rolling it out across the region in a pilot. And I go back to the tech company that built me the prototype. And the first thing they said to me was, listen, it only has load capacity, which means the number of users that can go on it for like 15 people so <laughs> to try it out. I was like, well, we need to get it to 500. They're like, we have to build a product to actually do that. <laughs> so Marina, you know, to answer your question, um, I sold it before I even built it, but you know, that's the great thing. Um, I am a BD sales founder. Founders mm. have different personalities. You know, I'm a pure product BD sales founder. What is BD? Sorry, just in business terms. development. Yeah, business development. So I'm constantly, you know, I, I connect very well with just random strangers anywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, that's very helpful in business, right? Not shy, not shy doing that. And that being able to deliver and wanting to deliver. So I don't let people down ever. Like I will show up without arms, like, you know, to deliver. I found and built my own tech team. And Marina, it was the hardest thing 
the first year I did everything wrong like I didn't know like who were the right people to hire I like you know, I, I, but you know what if I had to go back I would have had a Haley you know who you met my CTO at the very yes. beginning the co-founder but here's the thing because I did it the hard way there is not a single CTO or software developer today that can pull wool under my nose because I can yes. smell it a mile away um, because I've learned everything the hard way. So I know now. Um, so, you know, a Marina, it's trial and it's yeah. the, the desire to actually deliver that got me there. Right. Nice. It took longer, took longer. But, you know, I, I can finally say today, like, you know, I, I, we're rocking and rolling. <laughs> Nice. Oh, that's so fantastic. Um, we'll get back to Gleed in a second, uh, to Gleed in a second. I want to switch. Uh, we're going to kind of switch here. Um, you've traveled a lot. You travel over the world. It's obvious that, uh, and you've said in other interviews, you're delivering basically kind of like the experience that you've had into the app for others to also enjoy, uh, which is uh, an amazing education that is available um, almost at your fingertips. Uh, and correct me if I'm wrong with that statement. Do you want to add anything else beyond that? Yeah, um, you know, I will add that I've been blessed that it's easy for me to create network, right? Mm. So I just said to you, BD, we assume with all the social media out there, LinkedIn and, you know, TikTok, that people have networks. Mm -hmm. Networks is what gives you access to opportunity. Mm -hmm. right. So um, if I can allow people, you know, particularly if you're shy, particularly if you don't know how to signal, um, you know, uh, I, 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 this is how I think. This is how awesome I am. And you don't have the traditional ornaments. You didn't come from Harvard. You didn't come from Stanford. You didn't come from the right family. You didn't come, whatever that might be. If I can allow you and give you through Gleek a way to signal your wisdom, your ingenuity, your creativity, you know, and then have the right network see that so you can have opportunity. Um, like, you know, that's, you know, inclusion. Um, that's what truly, that's what it is, right? Um, so I think more than anything, Marina, um, that's what I would like to mm. give to us. You know, I've had the blessing to be included at the highest tables, at the lowest tables, right? I, I, I'm very fluid in terms of how, I, how high I can go. And if I can give that to others, I will... Um, you know, um, then, you know, that's my life's work, right? While I'm here. I to totally agree. And I think that you make a, go a good point. Like when you don't know, you don't have like the, um, you don't see who you want to become or you don't have experience in a specific area. Like I had no idea tech could have been a career for me at all, but maybe if that there was a network to support me, that would have been a much easier path than the one I took. And so I think that's that's amazing. Uh, my question was, and I don't know if I've heard the answer of this online, but like you are now in Dubai. What is in Dubai? And how is the ecosystem there in terms of startup? How, how is your startup able to uh, evolve in that setting? Sure. Um, so Dubai, I'm here because the quality of life um, is really good, right? Mm -hmm. And I mean quality of life just in basic things. You know, I, I originally come from the Caribbean, Trinidad and Tobago, so safety. As a female, I can go walk around the block at two o'clock in the morning by myself, you know, after working, you know, really late. And I, I, I it doesn't even cross my mind, I'm unsafe. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and that there is something to be said for that, yeah. uh, particularly for those of us coming from, you know, very violent countries. Yes. Um, and uh, particularly as a female. The second thing that is really attractive um, about Dubai is because my worldview is so open, there are, you know, 90 percent of the population comes from everywhere else in the world. Nice. Um, so it's, um, you know, you really get that, you know, I, I, you, you name it, you know, the the, the breadth of um, experience and people you meet here is, oh. you know, going. And then the third thing I would say is in terms of opportunity. So, you know, uh, my startup Gleek was one of them selected by Hub 71, which is the Emirate of Abu Dhabi. Um, and, you know, they paid for our employees for two years, all of their housing, all of their visas. They gave us offices at WeWork. Um, wow. They really yeah. supported me as a female in tech. Um, so I think, the ecosystem, even though it's not mature yet, you know, it's it's kind of now up and coming. 
Um, they are fast and they are willing to open the doors um, and help you along. You know, the fact that my startup powered, you know, the skills of the future pavilion of Expo 2020, um, you know, as a tiny startup, you know, all the other players were like the big guys, like Accenture and everyone else, you know, so they give you a shot um, at opportunity. Uh, and as a female, that's been incredible for me. Absolutely. That's fantastic. I love to hear about different tech ecosystem. I come from uh, Chicago, but both you and I have been in Boston. It was at MIT. I think you were at Harvard mm -hmm. and we know how that goes. And so I'm super happy to hear that there are places in which uh, women ventures can thrive. And I guess as an audience, if you are a woman in venture, maybe try considering Dubai. That sounds really good. Yeah. And I want to say also Saudi is booming right now. Yeah. Particularly for women. Wow. People are surprised when I say that, but right I am now, surprised right now. The place to be is actually Saudi. There is not lack of wealth <laughs> there. We know that, but the, the yeah. other part, the the, the, yeah. the the scary part of Saudi Arabia could be. Can I tell you, it's yeah. it it the country. You know, many many times, mm -hmm. you know, um, if we've never been. And yeah. it's, you know, we all do it, right? We make assumptions based on what the media tells yeah. us. Now, uh, I'm not saying that in, in any particular country, we don't know their history. Um, but I can tell you that the Saudi in the last five years and the Saudi today is this, it's, it's Dubai 15 years ago. It's wow. on the cusp of being ready to explode. Um, I, I travel there every month now, and the opportunities um, we have there is just mind blowing at the highest levels. Fantastic. I guess uh, I'm taking my little startup to Saudi Arabia. We should. <laughs> we should. And if it's in media or if it's around the space that you're in right now, that's actually a really booming space out there. Um, that, that could be uh, that could be good. Um, you uh, call yourself an intellectual badass. <laughs> I know. Is that is that a bad thing? No, I love it. I love it. So, so can I tell you where that comes from? Um, yes, please. it doesn't come from a place of arrogance at all. Huh? Um, uh, but it. But uh, also, like I read books. Okay. <laughs> okay, but here's where here is where this comes from. So, very often, you know, when I before Gleek, I had a foundation, Growing Leaders Foundation, um, that did exactly what Gleek does. You know, really hands on, um, in the schools in the Caribbean, and. Um, you know, I, and it was focused more on leadership, same skills of Gleek, but under the umbrella of leadership. And a couple of times I would go into um, classrooms in the Caribbean and, you know, I would get notes from the teacher saying the nerdiest kid all of a sudden came up to me after you left and said he's going up for school president because he's realized now that leadership, you can be a shy leader. Um, you don't need to be an, you know, an extroverted person. And then I would come out of other classrooms and Marina, you know, the first time in my life, kids would come and ask me to sign their autograph. And it was always the nerdy ones, right? Wow. There was something, there was something about, you know, when you talked to, when I, when you talked about resonating with the story, I, yeah. I, I, I resonate really well with very, you know, nerdy kids who never saw themselves at the front of the room. And um, I did a speech at this uh, this boys' college in my home country, Trinidad and Tobago, called uh, Naparima Boys. It's very well known. This is many of the prime ministers, but they're they're known as the nerdy boys of the country, right? And I remember doing, I remember where the word was born. I was standing there doing a speech for them. And, you know, all their teachers are like, you know, very proper sitting there and all the boys, they filled, you know, the stadium room. And I made a comment and I said, I'm just like you guys, an intellectual badass. And you should have seen their face. They looked at the teachers first to go, OK, did the teacher react? She said a bad word. And then they just got up and started. Cheering. And it was just one of those moments where I was just like, ah, oh, that's a word. And then whenever they they see me, you know, years later was in traveling back to Trinidad and Tobago and a young man came up to me to recognize him as I was getting my luggage off and he said to me, he goes, Miss, I'm one of the intellectual badasses. 
So that yeah, is a word, Marina. I love it. I, I love it because, um, I mean, you were speaking about so many other things that I love about discovering yourself and letting go of who you, everybody else wanted you to be and, and owning your own self. And I think that's the part that I love the most is like, you're just, you're just you. And so that's, that's so cool. Yeah. The, you, you said there were a lot of boys. Uh, is there still a lot of differences between boys and girls when we talk to intellectual equality or equal opportunity of, inter of, of education? Um, I think the opportunity now is available to everyone. I do think, you know, and I, I, I will very quickly equate it to even women in startups. Um, I do think that um, women don't take advantage of the opportunities as fast as the boys do not only in education, but I can actually see it in terms of startups. So if you look at venture funds, you know, there's this huge statistic about only 1% or less than 10% of women ever get, you know, um, funding from venture. And it, nobody ever asked this other question, how many of the applicants are actually women? And when you go and ask that question, how many of the applicants, it's very, very tiny, mm -hmm. very, the same thing happens in education, mm. right? So in education, in terms of opportunity, the boys will raise their hand, you know, whether they know anything or not, or whatever, they're just going to, you know, their risk tolerance is, okay, I'm going to, I'm in, it's the competitiveness. And as females, um, you know, I think if we are taught, you know, from a very young age, just like the boys, go run and fall off trees and, you know, you're going to be okay and, you know, scratch yourself up and, you know, just pick yourself up um, and, and keep going. I think um, we would we would take more of the opportunities that's available to us. Do you think through Gleek, are you, do you have that top of mind? And if so, how are you doing something about it? Sure. Um, so, you know, what Gleek does, you know, whether it is whatever group, whether it's women, whether it's um, uh, disadvantaged because of your economic status, uh, geography, what it does is it shows you the minute you practice, you know, we call it a micro practice. It's five minutes where we drop you into a situation and you get to practice, you know, a particular human skill. And I'm sure if, you know, you've done one, as soon as you're done, you get to see how five industry experts answer that. Um, and then you get to see, you look and, you know, the thing you automatically do is, oh, how do I stack up to that president uh, for mm. that or that? And what that does um, is it puts a light bulb you know, it kind of lights it, you know, that bulb in your head that says, wait a minute, my quality of thought is just as good as, um, and that is where the seed gets planted and where it gets, you know, for, for those kids who wanted to be class president and, uh, right. And that's what, you know, we're doing with adults. Uh, that's what we're doing for women, Marina. That's what we're doing for any kind any, of yeah. disadvantaged group. I love that. Uh, is to be able to shorten the distance between them and who they want to become by giving them access to the quality of thought, whether it's through the app or through live sessions with the experts. In like so many ways, I, um, you're fighting colonialism. <laughs> I, hate to, I hate to put it that way, but I'll, it feels true to me in a way in which um, I hear so many young women and women in general, because I, I deal with women a lot, uh, but it could be any disadvantaged group that they don't feel at par with. And what they usually mean with is their uh, some type of uh, uh, ideological well, white yeah. men, men port portrait. Yeah. Um, and then uh, as soon as they enter the room or they enter the team or they enter the project, realize that I am just, I, 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 my value is just as others. One, two, I can be smarter than others. I have skills that yeah. others don't have. And yeah. others have skills that I don't have, but that's okay because I am right there, right? Like I am yeah. not yeah. less than. Yeah. Absolutely. And that's what Gleek does because most people don't have the networks to know that. That's killer. I mean, right? in a good way. That's like really good. 
because <laughs> it boosts your confidence as you're learning. Absolutely. Because I even do. even in a traditional learning setting, when you learn something, do you do you know if you really know it the way other people know it? You know, like yeah. you always ask. You can ask yourself that question. Like like especially in America, where the disparity of quality of education is so high. Where where you have like one teacher that could be an amazing teacher that comes like it's teaching in public school, but the the, the student does not realize how amazing that teacher was until moments in history later yeah. when they're excelling because of that quality. Yeah. And not only disadvantage, but Marina, if you are right now the CEO of one of the biggest companies in the world with the changing economy that's happening right now, Web3 and AI. And what if, you know, we forget those people don't know also. And what right. if they can get to see what the other CEOs are listening to are thinking or doing or have access to them? Mm -hmm, we mm -hmm. that, you know, we just assume, ah, oh, but, you know, they're at the top. You know, that's what I learned. I, you know, I was head of people for Karim. Mm -hmm. Karim was the first unicorn in the region. And, you know, prior to that, all of my work was around my foundation, which is, you know, at risk groups. And Karim was interesting. It was it was really, um, I think, what planted the seed for Glee because I had brilliant founders who came from Stanford and McKinsey. Um, and, you know, the entire workforce was, you know, a pipeline coming from the best Ivy League schools. And then what I realized is, wait a minute, it's the same problems that I'm tackling with my disadvantaged youth. Not because you went to the finest schools means that you have motivation, confidence, creativity, uh, judgment and decision making, you know, all these human skills. And, you know, the first thing is, OK, let's get an LMS platform. It will teach us. But, you know, there is nothing better than having a human being with experience who's been there and done that going, listening, going, OK, here's here's how it's going to work in this scenario and context. It's the fastest way. To learn, to get yeah. The expertise network yeah. of learn. It reminds me of when we used to read in Italy, especially about how people learn during Renaissance times, and that they will go do deep uh, expertise, deep, um, deep uh, uh, internships, maybe if you call it, about with experts in their trade. Yep. Um, but if you don't know any experts. How are yeah. you going to do that nowadays, right? Yeah, and uh, just historically, think about historically before our grandparents or great grandparents knew how to read and write. How did knowledge get passed down? It was through storytelling, mm -hmm. sitting in a group with the expertise within the group. Nice. That's what we learned, right? Um, and what if now with technology, you can have that same sitting under a tree on a rock with the experts kind of telling you, but you have tech now. To do that with right. you. I'm looking forward that they Glee uh, increases human consciousness. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, I am. Um, we're trying hard. We're trying hard, and I, I have to tell you, someone told me the funniest thing the other day. They're like, you know, because all of our experts, other than the learners having an experience, our experts are also having this really beautiful, unique experience in Glee because they're all in these WhatsApp groups of 100 each in tribes, we call them learning tribes, and the experts are learning off of the experts wow. in different domains. Yeah. And the other day, someone came to me and they're like, you created a contrarian community. Like we feel at home <laughs> with our own. <laughs> it was just awesome. I just kind of looked and go, well, that was not my intention, but it's okay. Like if that's what we've created, we're good. <laughs> I, I I feel that's that's really beautiful. And you mentioned uh, you uh, Gleek is going to have a new launch for a new product coming out in July. It's called yes. Mentor GPT. It's taking on a page from uh, the renowned Chat GPT, but giving it its own Gleek, Gleek spin. Um, what is it? How are people going to use it? How do you what do you think? Sure. Sure. Um, so think about what ChatGPT is. ChatGPT is the thinking of the majority, mm -hmm. right? ChatGPT's models have learned off of what the majority of us think. Yeah. But you and I know, and everyone knows, within that majority, that might be 80% of us, there's always this 20% of us that are obscure thinkers, really outlier thinkers, creative thinkers, right? Those are the 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 the, the top, you know, 10 and 20% that does not fall under 
the umbrella mm -hmm. of chat gpt right so i you know i i love chat gpt i use it every day me too but i call but i call it sheep thinking sheep thinking sheep thinking because it's the norm and now what if you really wanted to have access to that contrarian obscure chat gpt cannot give you obscure thinking chat gpt cannot give you that outlier thinking and that's what our deep experts of our mentor community can mm. so the product that we're launching is everyday workplace situations which is you know the micro practices and now you are going to have chat gpt answer the micro practices for you and then you're immediately going to see how an industry expert who has context who has emotional IQ, who has, will answer it. And all of a sudden it becomes clear to you like, ah, that's why we matter as humans. I love it. That's fantastic. I'm going to include, I got some of um, how it will look the product. So I'm going to include in the views here um, on, on the edit. But I think it's, it's uh, the, the way you look is as you're learning, you could ask uh, yeah. this mentor GPT uh, questions like as if and how Haley put it was brilliant it's like remember when you used to study but you used to study with friends or with your parents and you were able to say hey I really don't understand this specific part can you help me figure yeah. it out and when you're learning by yourself you don't have anybody to ask unless you know somebody again who's learning the Absolutely. same thing or yes so that's one feature of the yeah. product which is it you have a companion as mm -hmm. you're learning so you have the the, the the traditional kind of uh, GPT. And then when you get to the end, you know, where you saw the mentor answers, you see the GPT answer and you see the mentor answers. Wow. So absolutely. Um, yes. And thank you for mentioning that. Yeah. So that's that's also another feature of the mentor GPT is you yeah. have a companion uh, to yeah. ask questions. Going, what, yeah. what does this mean? What, yeah. what do you suggest? Yeah. Um, you know, um, and... Marina, interestingly, this is the feature that most schools are trying to ban because they're afraid their students are going to cheat. Huh. Which takes me to, I think, something that I wanted to talk to you about. Um, and quickly, just checking on time. Can you can you stay a few minutes over the I hour? can. I okay. can. Fantastic. Okay. Uh, okay, so here goes um, here goes a question for you. It's about education for children, and I think a lot of us are quite fed up about how education for our children has not evolved in the last I don't know five or two hundred. I was going to say five hundred, but I don't want to exaggerate. <laughs> At least 200 years, at least. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's say uh, for our lifespan, whether that's three decades or four decades, you know, but but certainly it's been pretty much the so, same. Don't say my age on, <laughs> on national internet television. Listen, Marina, Marina, here's what I tell people my age is. I'm 35 plus some years of wisdom. And they're like, what the hell does that mean? And I'm like, exactly what I said. <laughs> I'm going to start saying the same thing. I feel like that's the perfect answer. But um, <laughs> but like, I, yeah, I've, I've been genuinely fed up with like how it has not evolved. And I was so, so curious to ask you this question. It's like, well, and I don't even know where to start generally, but my question in general is like, how do you see the future of education evolving, especially with you, you, did, you, you have done and do a lot of work with children? Mm -hmm. um, you give you are currently giving access to a lot of people to really important to a really important learning process and also a really important learning quality i would say um can we deliver that to also children across the world and um provide that equality of education that we're so eager to achieve sure so i'll address it in a couple of ways so if you recall you know, prior to Gleek, my foundation was primarily yeah. delivering um, what Gleek does on the ground for children between eight and 12 years old. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so I have a decade of work, um, you know, out within that space. So there is there is a fundamental reason. And then I will, uh, you know, answer your question on point that education has not changed. So education, most of education is anchored on something called pedagogy. Mm -hmm. And pedagogy means, um, you know, and the, one of the most popular ones is called Bloom's um, uh, taxonomy, right? And that taxonomy means 
Uh, a lesson should allow a child to should know how to remember. That's why we have a lot of tests. Can they remember? And the lesson should, this part should allow them to analyze. And this part should allow them to create, right? So most of the pedagogies are, you know, they haven't changed in like 50 years or 100 years. Like they're so old. And anyone who is testing or creating material for the school system is anchored on something that's no longer even relevant, right? So as to the reason why, Marina, it's because the root of what we're doing, the entire education pedagogy and the taxonomy needs to change. There's actually going to be a whole new layer called AI-enabled skills that needs to be, you know, from the time our kids are born starting school that they need to know now. It's no longer hard skills and soft skills. It's hard skills, soft skills, and AI-enabled mm -hmm. skills. Right. Um, so, you know, that's one of the reasons, primary reasons that it has not changed. Hopefully governments um, and systems, school systems, they have no choice with AI to revisit. You know, it's kind of like how COVID forced everybody to get online. Um, you know, I think AI is going to force everybody to look at the whole learning pedagogy. So I think you're going to see some shifts there. Now, your second part of the question is, is it possible for what it is we're doing for adults, for it to be delivered to children, absolutely, and it's a must because, you know, universities, I don't know if you know this statistic, but there's something like 100 plus universities are shutting down this year just yeah. in America. The same is going to start happening with high schools because parents, you know, you don't need to have a formal education anymore and a formal degree for your child to have street value to go out there and get a job and excel in life, right? Your child today can probably go take some AWS certificates, some IBM certificates in cloud, whatever, and then go put post their profile on Upwork and probably get a gig <laughs> making more than you make, right? If they're really good at it, they didn't need a degree to do that. So, you know, Marina, it's absolutely, I think the, the, the lines, it's gonna get very fluid in terms of I'm in high school, I'm in middle school, I'm in university, I think all of those lines are going to go away. Um, and what is available to adults is going to be available to the entire value chain. Certainly, you know, uh, that, 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 you know, children can understand, right? You know, what is being offered to them. Um, and, you know, it's a context also in their world, clearly. Um, but no question about it, it's coming. Yeah, I am super fascinated by this because that's what the education that I wish I had. I have very much a circular brain that goes into rabbit holes often and makes weird connections. And I, I was never able to thrive completely in school because everything was so linear and separate and separate that I, my brain was never able to. I had to learn how to do that for my brain myself. And so if even if I would to study one topic, I would have to expand over yeah. in order to learn that one thing I that I was the uh, exact same way. Exact. So you're probably um um you know a poly uh, uh thinker like me, yeah. you know, where you're crossing domains on yeah. many you know in school, I don't know, in the Caribbean because you're there, we had a, something called a, a common entrance exam, which was like mm -hmm. a taking exam and my parents were so convinced I was going to fail that I wrote the exam and when everybody else you know went away on vacation my parents immediately enrolled me into another school to get prepared to retake the exam because I'm not kidding you <laughs> because they were so convinced I was gonna fail <laughs> Because my brain, but hold on, Marina, you tell me to write an essay? Like, you have never seen an essay as creative as that as a student. <laughs> Same. <laughs> I no there's, wonder we get along so well. Not, there's, yeah, there's nothing boring that comes out of me. Like, nothing. Like, they're, sorry. Yeah. yeah. But so, ask me to, ask me, like, the name of whomever in what year, and I'm like, no clue. No clue. No clue. <laughs> yeah so uh we have that in common and you learn to manage it right but you know what marina if it's a testament to the fact that someone like us can actually build tech um, and run a tech company and you know what the industry experts and all their domains allows me to play around in the space that's very comfortable to me 
Nice. So I could have conversations with, you know, uh, we have Simon C, the head of AI for NVIDIA. And yeah. then the next day I could have a conversation with someone like, you know, we have the president of Cleveland Clinic. And then the next day I could have a conversation. So it allows that part of my brain that just goes from left to right in extremes yeah. to be able to be, you know, going, ah, oh, there's excitement there happening. You thrive, thrive, thrive. <laughs> Uh, I think that's the prospect of having cross education or the boundaries of education. It could be really scary for a lot of people, especially the ones that have thrived in a linear education flow, which I think speaks to the fact that maybe um, we need to also say that there are different styles of education and we, you know, embrace whether you want to go linearly or you want to blur the lines and go as fast as you can, as crazy as you can, yeah. maybe there is space for everybody. Again, um, speaking from more of a uh, hopeful place where everybody can be included, I guess. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think um, uh, particularly today as the world has a gig economy, um, uh, cross domain knowledge, um, the ability to be very fluid, you know, I can have a full time job and I can still be doing side hustles for even my competitors. Um, uh, I think, you know, all of those blurring of the lines of what's traditional um, is is happening as we speak. You know, I said to someone the other day, I said universities and schools probably need to set up their version of Airbnb soon um, to rent out their space I said because nobody's going to be going to them. <laughs> I was the first one not to be going there. <laughs> I worked and uh, studied all the time. So I was in and out of school and I saw two worlds. And, and I guess the the average, maybe not the average, 40% of American students, they actually get the campus experience of, of, yeah. of doing that. And I was, yeah. Um, okay. So we're launching Mentor GPT. We're having we're showing both contrary thinking, which is with the industry experts that will give you their own opinion, but we're also having the ChatGPT general knowledge experience, so you can compare and contrast. Mm -hmm. um, and you're also launching something else with with this new product feature, which is Lovely Humans. Yes, so Lovely Humans, we we originally launched as an NFT collection of uh, the world's leading experts last quarter, five hours of time with them, but we're launching the Lovely Humans book. So along with our mentor GPT, you know, the beautiful human stories, right, of everyday humans practicing human skills and sharing their wisdom and ingenuity, um, you know, the community part, I think we forget in all of this that we're going through right now, being virtual, um, you know, creating our tribes and communities and psychologically safe spaces is um, what matters. Um, so really excited about that book that we'll be launching with the with the mentor GPT. And this is the first time that we actually mention NFT in our conversation. And I know you've talked about it in quite a few interviews, uh, but just to quickly touch base on this, your platform is based on blockchain. Tell us why. Sure. So um, the, the leading experts in our community, we did something that um, uh, has never been done before. We tokenized their time using NFT blockchain technology. And the reason we did that is because if you are a deep expert in something, um, and you are guiding a board or a government or a country, a lot of IP, intellectual property, um, happens in those conversations. You're inventing things that have never existed before. And blockchain technology around that, like a wrapper around that conversation, allows both parties to be the co-owner of that. Um, and you can further tokenize that conversation. So it was an entry marina into the Web3 space and also protecting you know, the wisdom and ingenuity of the experts. I, um, I, I, this is one of the few times that I've heard using blockchain NFT as a protection mechanism. Your background as a lawyer, I think has played a big role in this uh, because yes, I have seen it myself as a protection mechanism, but for the people that are not as familiar, how does converting tokenizing, which means basically transforming a conversation into a piece of property, virtual property, if you will. How does yeah. that how does that protect the conversation? How does that protect the fact that I was part of that conversation? Sure. 
So right now, if you so first of all, let me just explain really quickly what um, uh, an NFT is and what blockchain is, because sometimes people just don't understand. Um, so NFTs um, um, is code. An NFT is code. So just like how you have C Sharp and Java, it's a piece of code, right? People, it's not art, people. Right? <laughs> it's attached. You can take art and attach it to the code. Um, you can take a document and attach it to the code, just like you can take a conversation, like even this conversation we're having now, and attach it to the code. The reason why you want to do that on blockchain is blockchain, you know, I always say it's the perfect notebook, right? So a regular notebook, you can scratch stuff off. Like this video right now, you can choose to save it, not save it. You can delete it down the road. Um, blockchain, you cannot erase anything and you cannot remove anything, mm. right? So when a conversation, right, you use something called a smart contract. When these tokenized conversations that's governed by this smart contract sits on blockchain, it is very clear the rules of what happens. Every, you know, everything invented is 50-50. You put the rules of the smart contract in there. It does not go away. It's forever. It's like time capsuled there. And that's one of the huge benefits of blockchain technology. That's why crypto is on blockchain, right? That's why Bitcoin is on blockchain. That's why Ethereum is on blockchain. It allows transparency and it allows things to be time capsule and it cannot disappear and be erased. I love that. Let's take it one step further in terms of practicality. So um, yeah. an expert goes in a conversation uh, with a board and sure. they co-own the conversation. Exactly. What do you do with this then? So in the contract, it says the smart contract, both the um, expert or the board can decide they want to further tokenize that conversation. So if they think there's value in that, let's say for external, there's no secret stuff in there, they can tokenize it. And if, you know, that video, if they want to have it be part of a Coursera course or whatever, they can both co-own, uh, get the revenues together off of that. That's a simple thing. Let's say in this conversation, it was private and the moderator of the conversation, we always have an IP attorney. So you are you are right. My legal background helps me. She will identify for them. Listen, that's an innovation you guys just came up with. Would you like me to file the IP? The patent gets filed in both parties' names. Anything that happens that commercializes off of that, both parties benefit from it. Wow, that's really cool. Yeah. I see the possibility coming across. Uh, I hear a lot of people that have ideas for products, but they don't yeah. want to build the company, but they want to benefit from that idea. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. Like, so if you have an idea for a product and you want to tell Uber to do something, maybe you can, you know, tokenize share that conversation. Tokenize the conversation and say, share the, 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 the value. Absolutely. Of that. And it's Absolutely. Absolutely. You you are getting it completely. And depending on how much you want to be involved. So in many cases, you know, very deep experts, the company will end up wanting needing their expertise. So, you know, the percentage share will certainly be bigger, right? If it's here's only an idea I have, I can I, I develop just the simple drawings for it, you go build it. Clearly, the percentage will be different, but you are protected under your smart contract and blockchain technology. And uh, and yeah, it may, it, to me, it makes total sense because uh, it can change the even some industries like uh, the, the news industry where um, reporters uh, have taken a salary instead of a share. Uh, yeah. and, and maybe that has been changing, but that could be even more present nowadays. Um, or people, not every, everybody could have ideas, but not everybody wants to build a company. You could, sure. sell, you could sell your idea to a group of people Absolutely. that want to build companies. Absolutely. You can token, you can create an NFT of a particular idea. Um, you can tokenize that. Um, can I tell you, you know, blockchain technology and NFT technology is going to change this world. And people mm -hmm. do not realize that. You know, one of the, um, you know, um, an example I give, you know, we have COP28 happening in the UAE uh, at the end of this year. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, I often say to people, blockchain technology is what's going to get us to net zero. And people go, how? And I said, just imagine all of your appliances in your home. So just imagine your like your washer, your dryer, 
all of it is on blockchain technology reporting your energy consumption. And can you imagine if your washer can just automatically talk to your dryer because they're all on the same blockchain going, listen, I need you to power down today because you're hitting your limits. And all of your stuff in your household is just communicating with each other by itself. You don't have to do a thing because they were pegged on blockchain technology. <laughs> I will not allow that relationship. My washer cannot absolutely talk to my dry. <laughs> but but do you understand what I'm saying? 100 percent. Uh what also blockchain allows, and I think a lot of people don't understand this, is that uh, we can give currency to machines. Absolutely. Which Absolutely. is a, a completely different level of of imagine if my car went to buy the gas station whatever station electric gas whatever future station on its own yeah got the thing done without having me present yeah so Can so we... yeah so an example i give is automated vehicle, automated uh, autonomous driving and yeah. i always give this example going in autonomous driving can you imagine if the car in front because it's all autonomous driving it, it's based on a calibration everybody going to the same on the same you know speed as can you imagine if you're running late and you just let your car know and your car communicates with the cars in front or in the side going, listen, pull this to the side. I'll pay your tolls today. I need to speed up. Wow. That's possible with blockchain technology. That is so cool. I love it. So, so hold on. We've gone completely off topic, but that's okay. It's, it's totally, it's totally, it, it, we're, we're going to bring it right back because I think what's important is that you're using a technology um, that has been used for only a few specific use cases, which what the most known one is crypto, for a learning platform. So that yeah. is innovative as hell. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, and our experts think like they're so cool as school when they they tell me they're like, I told my grandkids that I'm an NFT, <laughs> you know. And hold on, Marina. <laughs> Um, most of our industry experts are intellectual badasses. They've been nerds their entire oh. career. And the fact that we were able to bring them now into this space and for them to be NFTs, I mean, they light up just like those younger ones who yeah. wanted to be class president. Uh, I'll, make, I'll make a note of this for anybody listening who's listening who's interested in becoming an expert and becoming an NFT is Gleek will also teach you how to get there. So you're not alone in the journey of like, how do I, how am I an expert? How do I become an NFT? Through Gleek, you can learn how to do this. So you don't have to feel like oh, you're on your own. Absolutely. Thank you for that, Marina. Okay. So, <laughs> uh, so um, one uh one i think uh the one thing i want to close with because you are an intellectual badass i would love to hear uh you you are an author already mm -hmm. but one of the questions that i do ask m of, uh, my guest is what is a book that you would write that i guess you have not written yet hmm what is a book that I would write that I have not written yet? So um, I I wrote my second book three years ago, Marina. And the minute I, a year later, I, I, I read it and I said to myself, did you actually really believe that stuff you wrote? All of this is nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> my mind changed completely about the topic. So... Um, I'm not ready to write a book right now. I don't know what the book is going to be in the future. Um, I don't think I will, I, I will write it on my own. I will co-author a book with ChatGPT probably. Um, and I, it will always be, my first book was called Who Will I Become? It will always be the books and the stories that I share about human potential, human vulnerability being our strength and our courage um human ingenuity and um and always i've always put spoonfuls of um of you know dancing to that tune of your own unique song fantastic that would be the book i would write great um what are some of your go-to tools that you use for your daily success chat gpt is one <laughs> we know it's mine <laughs> um, 
So I use um, um, uh, another one called um, Visme, V-I-S-M-E, for all of my... Are you there? Yes. Yep. Yes, Visme for all of my... V-I-S-M-E dot C-O for mm -hmm. all of my white papers. Um, clearly, I use the basics like, you know, Slack, Canva, just for workflows, um, uh, Zoom. I use perplexity.ai. So for everybody who's using, you know, ChatGPT is terrible at facts and numbers. People always go, it lies. It's not that it doesn't lie. People just use it in the wrong way. Facts and numbers, um, perplexity.ai is like killer um, in terms of um, uh, uh, um, to use. And is there any other tool I'm using right now? Um, I go through tools all the time. I'm that curious nut that will go try something new. But I think those would be the ones. I'm really digging this me doc right now. Uh, what is one thing you would want the audience to remember out of whether it's this conversation, your product, and or your journey? Uh, I think the one thing I would want anyone to remember, and I try to remind myself every single day, is that um, you are just passing through, you know, and um, tomorrow is not promised to you or myself um, or to any of us. And every single day, you know, you need to be able in everything that you do, every touch point with you um, in your work, in your body of work, um, you know, whatever that might be. Autograph it with excellence, like a Picasso painting. I don't care if it's an Excel spreadsheet and you're an accountant. Like, you know, take that Excel spreadsheet and put it up at the Louvre, <laughs> just like the Mona Lisa, right? It has to be that good. Um, and, you know, the decisions you make and the, the, the way you interact, um, you know, be sure you're able to ask this question and answer it at the end of the day. Is my soul okay with what I just did, mm -hmm. um, what I just said? Um, and if you can, at the end of the day, say, you know what, my soul likes who I am. Um, and you can close your eyes, um, uh, knowing that you put your best stuff out there. Uh, imperfect, um, you know, it's never perfect, but imperfect, you know, effort to get to your best stuff out there. Um, I think that would be the message. At least that's how I try to li live each day. Oh, that's so good. Thank you so much. And last but not least, this podcast is called Unbossed. What do you yes. think, what does embossed mean to you? Uh, I think that many of us um, have given being a boss a bad, um, a bad, um, a bad name. Yeah, right? yeah, bad name. Um, yeah. I actually have called employees out saying, do not call me boss. I do not appreciate it. Mm. I'm not kidding you. Like I've called people out just because there's such a negative connotation to that. So I think embossed would be all of those qualities that allows you to lead in a um in your own authentic way um uh you know to me that's what you know being on boss so you're kind of you're kind of riffing off of stealing some of the good bling of boss but you're unbossing it <laughs> I love that boss. one. I love it. It's like you're taking all the boss qualities, the good qualities, and then you're embossing the bad qualities, and you're great. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you're, like, you're making sure you take the bling. And right? <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. It has been my pleasure to have you on uh, the Emboss podcast. I hope you come back soon. Uh, listen, Marina, I am, uh, I'm a, a fan, and I can't wait um, to see who you become. Oh. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Thank you for listening to another episode of Embossed. I look forward to seeing you on TikTok, YouTube, Spotify, Anchor, and Apple Podcast, and any other podcast platform that you have on your phone. Please follow me. Give me some ratings. Tell me how you're feeling. Do you feel embossed? And I hope you follow me for more content like this. Bye.